Now, don't get me wrong. I love Mora knives, and their performance to value is legendary the world over. But I also like options in variety in my bushcraft knives. And so, when I came across the Finnish made Brissa Hiker 95, I had to snag it and put it through its paces. So, I invite you to come with me today as we see what the capabilities of this tool are and how it may stand out compared to its Scandinavian brethren. First off is the sheath. It's not polymer. Don't get me wrong, I like polymer, but it's nice to have leather, and this is a good grain, thick leather design, good stitching, good little rivet on the top. It's gonna survive the friction test, so if you are hiking with this, hunting with it, something like that, you're not gonna lose it, and you can always wet form it, you know, make it even more snug. And it's a dangler. It's gonna come standard this way, so you can drop carry it like that, or, it's big enough that you can run it right through here, and it's still not gonna ride super high. So it gives you multiple options in order to carry it. But sorry lefties, you're gonna have to cross draw this thing because it's set up for right hand carry. But before we keep getting after it with the tool, we have a new sponsor here at the channel that I am really excited about, which is Huckberry. They bring us the best new brands and gear at the best prices while sharing tips, ideas, and stories to inspire our next adventure. And they carry some of the best quality gear around, like my USA made Flint and Tinder flannel lined wax trucker jacket that I've been wearing a bunch here on the channel that you've seen recently. I know several of you guys have been asking me about it. I love this coat with tons of colors to choose from, relaxed or classic fit with options for flannel, wool, or quilted lining. It's designed to wear in and not out, being tough, timeless, and made right here in the USA. But Huckberry also collaborates with some of the best known brands around. I've been rocking their exclusive take on the Danner Logger 917 boots, and these things rock. I've taken them around town and all the way up to mountain peaks and back again, but still being built out of durable, long lasting, full grain leather, Gore Tex liners, paired with Vibram soles and a TPU shank, providing stability and support on those rugged trails, but also giving you all the cushion you need when you're walking around town to the office. Or collaborating with GORUCK to make American made low profile backpacks with exclusive layouts to the Huckberry brand. But then giving us inspirational stories on their Traverse podcast with guests like former Navy SEAL and author Jocko Willink. Huckberry offers the best price guaranteed plus free 60 day returns. And that's just scratching the surface of what Huckberry has to offer. And guys, I've been able to land an exclusive promo code for you, the viewers, for 15% off your first purchase, and that's gonna be HBGT15, and you can apply that for the first two weeks after this video goes live and get yourself a good discount. So check out the link and the promo code in the description box below and see all that Huckberry has to offer. Now that was interesting, the 90 degree spine was a little bit more of a struggle than I thought to get it to throw sparks. It is 90, and it's about an inch back here, uh, but I, ha I have plenty of blades that are easier to throw sparks with, I guess, than this one is, and it's a pretty small area to work with. Okay, so we got a little piece of paper. This is before all the testing, nice. So we'll see how that 12C27 holds up at the end. So we need to do some feather sticks, so let's start out with breaking down a little bit of this pine here, pretty dense. Now, it does have a swedge, and I really like that swedge. It's not sharp, and I know some true brush crafters would be like, oh no, it's gotta be you know like rounded, very comfortable. We'll see how it does here. And at uh, an eighth of an inch thick, it's like 3.5 millimeters, 0.13. On the thickness, Scandi grind with, for this model, and like 3.75 cutting edge, this is about max that you're gonna be doing. Nice, let's split that pine pretty good. All right. Not too bad for just breaking down some basic kindling, which is all you're gonna do with a knife of this size. I mean, you're not gonna be you know, destroying stuff. It is, it's beating, that swedge is beating up the the batoning stick, whereas just a normal drop point or something may not do that as badly. Okay, let's look, get a little crazy, a lot denser, older piece of wood. I don't know what type of wood exactly, but I'm just gonna beat on it once to see how it's holding up inside that handle. Oh yeah, dude. What? 
chiseling off a few little pieces here. Oh yeah, nice. I'm gonna use this for our kindling, guys. So very happy for the style of blade that it is. Now I was looking all over the internet. I couldn't find exactly what type of tang it has. From what I can tell, it has a stick tang. So it shrinks slightly and comes down about three fourths of the way just before that lanyard hole. Back there is nice, it has a little lanyard so you could do some little hack and it's so light at under four ounces. I mean, you're not gonna do any, very thin delimiting, like pinker, smaller than your pinky. Live growth would probably be all that you could wrist flick off so i mean you're gonna do something more like this so if you're gonna do lean bigger stuff you're gonna have to do the side splitting kind of baton style it's good too to see how it's handling the shock i'm not feeling any shock or vibration in the polypropylene handle which is really nice and how will that edge hold up long term? There we go. Nice. It is really marring up the batoning stick. So if you think you're just gonna be cracking away at this, that is a downside to having the swedge. Uh, gives it some more, honestly, just stylistic stuff that you, know, you don't normally see in a bushcraft. So we'll see how it does on the back spine push cuts here in a bit. Now, if you're doing more general utility, that's where it's really cool that they have a full flat ground version available. Maybe at some point I'll have to get myself one. We'll have to do a head to head. I figure most people are gonna go with the Scandi. Um, and that's really where like for Woodscraft it's gonna shine. I mean, I'm not even having to try. That's getting nice. Almost paper thin right there. Feather sticks are a dream. Look at that. All freaking day. Now we're talking. Let's get a quick spear point going here. Oh, yeah. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Just eats up that. Look at that. That is like idiotically quick. Oh, man. That was like freaking nothing. With that spine, again, swedged. Now, of course, I mean, that's kind of the point. If you want if you want those things, go with Amora. But I have, this is not bad. Now, maybe really dense hardwood that I'm working with, it would be uncomfortable over a long period of time, particularly if I'm really close. But I mean, I'm using my thumb as main leverage point right there to really like see how much that's eating into that wood. And it wouldn't be any different than like, uh, uh, a 511 basic Mora because of how thin those spines are. So, but it can eat, yeah. And the size is just very nimble. So you're gonna be able to do fine cuts, small cuts to really craft the wood how you want it. So we have this black polypropylene handle, you know, very similar to what we expect a lot in the, you know, modern bushcraft material market, very tough. Um, this is kind of rubberized a little bit, has a little more textile feel, tactile feel than um, other blades with polypropylene that I've had, some of my Moras. Um, and then it has like fish scale texturing. Hopefully you can see that there. I really like it. It looks cool and then it gives good grip to it as well. Giving you a little bit of a cut in there with some scalloping around the neck and then that lanyard hole out the back. And I'm glad that it isn't, I, I like Pucos, I'm getting used to them, but it's nice to have that little bit of sweep and a little bit of guard, just giving you extra control, you know, over the tool. Uh, definitely a little bit fuller on the back end, tapering down near the neck. So um, most of the pressure when I'm carving, I feel on my ring finger and my middle finger. Those two is where you're gonna feel most of the grip. Now my index is not floating, which is good, but it is a little bit narrow, narrower than at the center around the neck but fills out my large size hands very nicely and I feel very much in control with no hot spots. Now, if you're doing bushcrafting, you're probably using some more natural materials from time to time. So we got some hemp rope here. Let's just see how it does. Yeah, easy. Hemp rope is pretty abrasive. But yeah, not a lot of pressure. Cordage is key when you're in the outdoors. Like butter. Let's do some notch action here. I do like that nice platform right there. Really good. Love how Scandi just bites into the wood. There we go, just kind of squaring off that top lip a little bit to catch a, a 
piece of cordage or a uh, trip wire or something like that, you know, whatever for a trap. Now food prep, um, scanties are not my preference, just so you can see here. See how it's kind of like mushing the apple. See that? <laughs> like exploded it. Um, and just didn't give a clean cut on the bottom. It engages well, but it doesn't give a clean cut. So fruits and vegetables, I don't really prefer. Scanty grind, you have to do this like weird cut and it's never clean and it's always weird. Meat, they work a lot better. Um, but again, I wish I had, now in retrospect, I just wish that I had picked up the, the full flat grind version as well. That's where an FFG is just going to do better with food prep and some of that stuff. I usually hate galas. This is a pretty good gala apple. All right, moment of truth tip test. Oh yeah, nice. All right, let's just do edge attention. Very nice. I'd say same edge as when we started. Good to see that. I paid about $55 over on eBay for this Hiker 95. That's what the full flat or skinny ground versions will usually go for. You can find them on Amazon and there are other websites that will ship here to the States um, that you can pick them up. So about 55 bucks, let's say on average is what you're gonna pay for either version, leather, Sandvik, finish made, you know, like all the stuff that we're looking at. That's very, I would say, good value. Now, when you run up against certain moras, you know, maybe that changes a little bit. And I will have links for you guys throughout the video below for all these that we're talking about. Um, here is a companion from Mora. I don't have my heavy duty. I don't know where it is. It's buried somewhere. But, uh, you know, very similar shape, similar steel that Mora is using. Uh, you know, the sh handle shape is a little bit different. You know, you got these handle scales and kind of a bigger cut in maybe a little bit on the Brissa, you know, on the Mora polymer light duty sheath, nothing wrong with that, but you know, it's nice to see the leather. Uh, but this guy's going to be a heavy duty companion. It's like 20 to $25, so like half the price, you know? So you are definitely paying more for some of the features and just some of the different styling that you're going to get with the Brissa over Amora. Then on the flip, we have Amora Garberg, you know, Sandvik 14C 28N, better steel, arguably, than what's on the Hiker 95. Very similar size, full tank construction, polymer sheath, usually 55 to $65 is what you can get it for. You can find these Moras with leather sheaths, but that's going to jack up the price. And I actually do not like the leather sheath on the Garberg. It's goofy. I don't like it. I way prefer this leather sheath on the Hiker 95. Um, but, you know, very similar pricing, different style. So that's something just to kind of consider when you're looking at the Hiker 95 for competitive options. Well, there you go, guys. I think that this is a really cool option for those of you who have gotten your hands on plenty of Moras and you just want to try something different, or maybe Moras just don't connect with you for whatever reason, and you like the features and you like the style of this blade a little bit more, and with the option for full flat as well as Scandi, it gives you a little bit more variety that's kind of hard to find in this market of lightweight, compact, Scandi ground, you know, style, Scandinavian made, let's say fixed blades. But I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts, particularly if you own a Brissa Hiker. What's your, been your experience? Are you happy with it? Have you had issues? I always appreciate the comments that you guys leave below. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. I'm throwing up content like this every single week. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.